Today we'll cover the correct jaw movement for the extreme ranges. Before we get into that, just wanted to quickly remind you to subscribe, comment and give a thumbs up for this video if you liked it. Share my stuff on your Facebook, Twitter or whatever social media platform you use. That would be very helpful. That being said, let's dig into the detail. Jaw movement can be used for two reasons. Changing the direction of your air and opening the space in between your lips. The way the jaw is built allows us to move it into multiple directions in a rotary manner. Being in control and aware of the adjustments you can make with it will help you to achieve extreme ranges, project better, and open and unlimited flexibility. The general rule of thumb is whenever you go higher in the pitch, your air is supposed to be directed downwards and obviously vice versa when you're going down. Mid-range you generally blow a straight airway which is one of the reasons why it's usually the comfortable range for most of the players. The things that you have to be aware of though are that you want to keep those changes in the air direction as minor as possible. Otherwise you'll corrupt the quality of your sound. With that in mind, let's talk about what's happening with your jaw if the movement is correct. There are three different types of jaw movement when it comes to playing brass. Moving your jaw down and outwards for your low range. Moving your jaw up and inwards for the higher range. And the third type we'll leave for the future videos. So far, everything sounds pretty easy. However, as always, there is a catch. If you move your jaw too low, your lips will not be able to shut and therefore vibrate. In other words, instead of hearing a sound, you will only get the air moving through your instrument. On the contrary, if you move your jaw upwards too much, it will be easier to keep your lips compressed for the vibration, but now the air might get blocked and you will be stuck with no sound either way. On top of that, you have to keep your lips touching the mouthpiece evenly and when you move your jaw, unless you adjust your mouthpiece, you will lose the control. Unlike playing trumpet or any other smaller instrument, manipulating mouthpiece angles on the euphonium is not as simple because of the size of it. However, since we have a larger mouthpiece, instead of moving our instrument, we can move our jaw with less risk of breaking the connection between our lips and mouthpiece. Just to give you a quick example, we'll look at how this works on both trumpet and euphonium so you could have a better clue of what I mean. So we just saw a video of Alan Bitsuti showing a great control within the ranges. By now you should have noticed how he uses the angles of his instrument to help him change the pitch direction. Let's just watch the video again in slow motion. So as you can see the trumpet is being pulled down whenever the pitch goes up in any significant manner and pulled back down whenever the pitch is being lowered. This is purely to help change the directions of the airwave. It becomes a little bit trickier when it comes to playing larger instruments since we don't have as much room for movement. Therefore we have to use a little bit less of instrument motion and a little bit more of our jaw motion. Let me give you a quick demo of how this would look on euphonium if I was to play a similar type of arpeggios. <laughs> So as you can see the instrument movement is less prominent, however I'm using my jaw to compensate for that. Since we covered the importance and reasoning behind the jaw movement, let me show you a few exercises that could help you practice this so you could achieve a limitless range and flexibility. So we will start off with practicing downward movement for a low range. We're going to play a very simple three note pattern. We will start on a middle C or a concert pitch B flat then go down the octave to the low C and eventually down one more octave to the pedal C. I normally put my metronome on around 60 beats per minute and play the first two notes for two beats and the last one for four. Feel free to adjust to your own comfort though.
What we will focus on is that whenever we go down the pitch, we push our jaw down and outwards. When you do this, make sure to use a mirror if you have one. It will help you to be a little bit more aware of what's going on. Let me show you how this works. Notice the downward movement I'm using particularly for the lowest note. If you're doing this correctly, you will get a very smooth transition in between the notes as well as a very resonant open sound. To practice this particular movement, you can mix up any intervals or patterns that go downwards, as long as you stick to a safe middle low range. It will ensure that you are not damaging your lips with incorrect technique. Later on, when you get a little bit more comfortable with your skills, you can incorporate some more extreme stuff. The selection of the exercises for the upward motion will be obviously different. This is where you have to be very careful not to exaggerate the movement. It has to be very slight. The way I like thinking about it is if I was trying to flatten the bottom portion of my ambusher right here instead of moving the jaw. Even though whenever you look in the mirror, results are eventually the same. It's just a little trick that might or might not work for you. Either way, the exercise we will use to improve our high range or our movement towards higher notes is going to be a major scale pattern. We'll start on in the low C or concert pitch B flat, go up to the low D. Then we start again on the low C and skip a note to our E and continue this till we reach an octave interval. I normally play every note for two beats and breathe around every four notes, but again, you can be liberal with it. We will do this pattern chromatically downwards till we reach our lowest possible combination. A few quick tips before I show you how to do this. The transition should be very smooth between the intervals. If you start getting big gaps in between your notes, take a quick rest and start where you left off. Focus on your volume. Try to make the lowest note slightly louder than the higher note. I'll explain the reasoning behind that in the future videos as well, but for now, just trust me and follow what I do. So as you can see, whenever I go up in order to adjust my air wave, I move my jaw a bit inwards. It is very important that you avoid sinking your bottom lip too much behind your upper lip. It should not be much of a problem in this range, but it might and most likely will happen to a certain extent when you go to more extreme high ranges. It is important that you adjust your mouthpiece or instrument angle in a correct way so you don't put any access pressure on your upper lip, as well as keep contact between your mouthpiece and lips in a very equal manner. Last exercise for the day will be a combination of both upward and downward motion in a single pattern. We will start on a low C or concert pitch B flat, go upwards to the G and eventually end up on a middle C. Then we will attack the middle C and do the same pattern in the reverse. Same rules apply here as well. We will do this pattern chromatically down to our lowest possible combination. Try and have a mirror in front of you so you're aware of what's happening. Feel free to breathe in the middle if necessary. Okay, let's do this. I know I'm being a little bit repetitive, but try and get the transition as smooth as possible. Smoothness is an indicator that the motion between your jaw and air is intact. Try and focus on everything that I mentioned before. Movement, volume, and smoothness. So by now you should feel a difference in your ability to transition smoothly. This is a great start towards having extremes in your skill basket. You can mix up similar basic slur exercises to practice jaw motion in case you get a little bit bored. It might feel a little bit uncomfortable in the beginning and the sound might suffer to a certain extent until you find the exact amount of motion you need to execute correct within the ranges. 
Nonetheless, it is something you need to learn or otherwise you'll limit your playing abilities at some point. It is much better to do this earlier in your development before you develop strong incorrect habits. Also, when you know what to focus on, suddenly basic stuff becomes much more interesting to practice. Once again guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't seen my previous videos, make sure to click on any of the screens right here. I have already covered some important stuff, so if you're interested in improving yourself, it is worth checking out. For those who have been following my channel, you probably noticed the constant improvements of the content, quality and structure. I'm really trying to make these videos not only informative but visual pleasing to watch. Make sure to help me out by sharing, liking and subscribing. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you want to see in the future. If you're interested in any online lessons, I'll put my contact detail down below as well. And for now, stay safe, work hard and keep motivated. Till the next time. Give a thumbs up for this video. Before we get into that, just wanted to quickly remind you to specific. Let me give you a quick demo of how this would look on euphomium. Let me give you a quick demo of how this would look on euphomium. Euphomium. What the f is that? I play eupho. I'm a professional euphomium player. Okay. Let me give you a quick demo of how this would look on euphonium if I was to play. <laughs> oh my god. Let me give you a quick demo of how this would look on euphonium if I was to play similar type of arpeggios. Yes. I didn't even know what take that was. Like <laughs> Let me show you a few exercises that could help. Yep. Oh boy. Since we got. Since seeing you, what scene is that? <laughs> so by now you should have feel, you should have feel the exact amount of motion you need to, this was shit. We push our jaw, uh,